to have the hearing ears to hear what the Spirit is saying today. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we will hear from it. Through this anointed one today, what you have for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tim. Tim was working late into the night, I think. Are you an anesthesiologist? Is that what you do? Not quite? Respiratory therapist. Okay. Well, either way, I was thinking that if I was in the, in the hospital, I'd be blessed to have him come help me. So not just spiritually, but physically, right? <clears throat> um, I was going to read a portion of just a couple of verses here out of Matthew 22, and then we'll get started here. So thank you all for being here, family and friends. I, uh, I told my family that I sometimes like to embarrass them uh, when I share, and uh, they still came. So <laughs> Jason and Michael, I was kind of teasing Jason earlier this week. Um, and so they're pretty brave today to be here, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start with reading these, this portion of Scripture. Um, the reason, there's a couple of different reasons I want to read this, but um, throughout my Christian life, you know, I, when I'd read this, I, 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 I've asked the question in my heart, and I assume that I'm... Um, I'm like a lot of you out there, um, but how do we do this, you know, and I don't know, we have, the church is kind of an interesting place, um, because, you know, the church is kind of like a, it could be likened to a lot of things, I believe. I believe it is a place for mature Christians, but it's also for the young Christian, and it's all, it's kind of like a, a kind of like a hospital in some ways, and um, I, I would like to say don't wait till you're sick to come to church, but um, in a sense, you know, it's like it's a caring place, it's a place that um, we help each other, and um, yeah, let's just get started here, verse 36, it says, Master... Which is, the, which is the great commandment in the law? What is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself. On those two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So I'm not sure that I'm uh, qualified to explain that, but I would like to um, maybe start with a little demonstration, but by the way, I didn't ask Dan for permission to do this, but he said that he trusts me and he, I could do anything I wanted, okay? So thanks, Dan. Um, But there's this thing that, <laughs> it is deer season, isn't it? Um, there's this thing in life that um, the portion of scriptures that have often blessed me, and I, I do this, like I don't want to draw attention to self here, but for the sake of young people, um, or even for us older ones, how often do we go to church and we hear a good message, and a day later, it is a little bit of a struggle for us to remember what was preached. And so that's why I'm doing this, okay? And what I'm also doing is trying to build, um, you know, recently I've been going through some studying with kind of business and kind of things, but to build awareness. And without, without building awareness and without a call to action, without a call to action, we just kind of meet from one Sunday to the next, and, and too often things don't change much.
You know, we're, <clears throat> we meet for what, two hours on a Sunday morning, and then there's six and a half days that we're not together. And so for the sake of this demonstration, for, this, for the time that we get up in the morning, until we hopefully lay down at night for rest, that we remember the Lord our God. And we do those things that are pleasing and, and the songs, um, you know, mention about that we would worship him, worship him, that we would worship the Lord with our, our words, our actions. And uh, I believe that it's not just it's not just a Sunday morning Christianity that, that we're called to live. Um, I uh, didn't bring the broadheads, so any hunters out there, don't be too scared here. But how often, you know, and I believe that as we raise a family or pastor a church or, um, or run a business, uh, I believe that running a business can be very spiritual, by the way. But, you know, if people don't catch the vision, how often do we just try to push each other? And uh, when I hire people or interview people, I often tell them that I don't, I don't get along very well with a wheelbarrow. And, uh, you know, have you ever noticed a wheelbarrow, it doesn't move unless you pick it up and push it? And so I believe as the church of Jesus Christ, his word needs to draw us. And, you know, if we, if we just push things, you know, the best thing we can do here is I just push it. And um, I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to kill a deer that way. Right? But how often... Do we come to church and we just get a little push? And I'm not, I don't want to take away from that. You know, that's a beautiful thing to happen. Um, that we get a little push maybe. And sometimes we as, you know, if we're leading like even at, at work or whatever, we think, well, if I could just give him a little push, you know. But, but think about the difference between a push, and maybe, maybe I'll just take the arrow out here, but versus a draw. Now you think I get, you think that you think we'll get the game this way, you know? And and if you read the scripture, um, if you read through the Bible, the Bible is clear, full of verses, and I would have enough, um, you know. The the challenge of sharing is sometimes um, having like a whole truckload of verses you want to share, but knowing which ones to share to stay in time. And, you know, and so somebody's not out there saying TMI, TMI, too much information, you know. Um, I don't know how well this will work for the Facebook Live thing, but I'll try to set it there. <clears throat> um, Dan said that they would be watching from Ghana, Africa, and they would be probably skipping an afternoon nap at 3.30 in the afternoon, and it's nice and warm. And uh, he said they'd be watching. I said, well, no pressure then, right? No pressure. So... Um, but as we talk about, the title of my message was kind of like love. Um, a high standard with deep grace. And maybe I have to bring this forward so people on the other side can see. But I'm not going to do much drawing here, so stick with me here just a little bit. But if... You know, I asked this question at work the other day. Um, if, 
if this is love, let's call it the high standard. Um, how does that look? Like, just so we can, we have uh, a young Christian like Chloe, thanks for being here. And then we have, uh, I don't want to expose your age here, I'm not sure if I should or not. But I think Verda said, you, you was coming here for church for how many years? Okay, all our life. I wasn't going to ask your age, but thank you for just being. Uh, but I think, yeah, so 70 years. So, um, so that's what we have. You became a Christian at what age? 13. So uh, am I thinking right, 57 years? So we have a young Christian that's been here, coming here occasionally and, and got born again at uh, 57 years. So... As a, when, I, when I share, I think of that, okay? I think, well, this, this old believer could think, wow, that's kind of elementary and that's kind of foolish. You know, I wanted to hear some real meat. And then the young soul needs the milk of God's word. Um, like a little, um, a little child. Um, and so hopefully we don't bore anybody here. But so a high standard, what does a high standard look like in God's word today? Um, when we have a problem or somebody, someone sins or, um, or there's, a, there's an idea that doesn't, doesn't uh, line up with scripture, what are we going to do? Are we going to lower the standard? Are we going to come down here and meet that? Or is there a better way? And um, so this is, this is kind of, um, oh, you can read that, but deep grace. So a high standard with deep grace, and this is just some thoughts that I've had, and we'll get into some more scripture here, but I, I wrote down they're too often, are they're divorced. Or they're separated. Um, we can't, if, and I'm open to correction here, but if you would all to speak with me, I think you would mostly 99% or 100% agree that we don't change the standard, right? But what we do do is we do meet people where their needs are. Wherever, however far down we need to go, we meet those needs. And you know, some people may be struggling with um, a more, I'm not such a, I, uh, I, sometimes I listen to messages, I think, man, he's an eloquent speaker, but just to, just to, to explain my heart, like, sometimes we meet people that have been a Christian for 57 years and they have an issue that is more of a mature fight maybe. And then there's other times when there's, there's needs or there's sin that, you know, we, we need to go deeper to help that person much deeper than what most people want to go. Um, And I believe it's a, it's a cry and shame that, you know, the, the one phrase I heard a young man say yesterday was, um, the best people he ever met were Christian people, and the worst people he ever met were Christian people. We won't get into the real Christians or fake Christians or all that, but think about that statement. Think about us not willing to go down here. You know, and I wonder, in the next portion of Scripture, we'll talk more about it, but I wonder, um, you know, it, there's, there's so many more things to talk about here, but 
that grace, that work of grace that God does in our hearts, that work of grace that God does in our hearts, isn't it beautiful that when we can see that grace passed on and worked out in all of our lives? And there's an aspect of that scripture there that I don't know if anyone caught this, but the second is likened to it. By the way, I believe that God kind of has a sense of humor sometimes. <laughs> um, he says, the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And there's probably people here that are saying, I don't really love myself today. What are we going to do? Um, in, in, the, in the church of Jesus Christ, I believe that we need to be very sensitive to um, all those things. And I, I believe also that the world, um, the, 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 the bulk of the message here is about love today. And uh, I wanted to pull up the scriptures, uh, 1 G uh, John 4, chapter 4, or 1 John. But the, you know, I don't come to you today with a lot of answers, if that makes sense. Um, I think of the, the uh, lame man that was laying by the pool, Bethsaida, I think it was called. It was called the Sheep's Gate, which is kind of an interesting comment there. But this man was laying there for years. And does anybody know, he was, if we go through a trial for like a year or two, that's a long time. But it says this man was 38 years old. Who, who's 38 in here today? Jason, are you 38? Close, aren't you? 38 years old. He was 38 years old, and he was lame and couldn't walk. And he was waiting for that water to stir, and he would try to get in that pool so he could get healed. And he didn't know, he didn't know Jesus. Jesus was just starting his ministry. And, you know, this is another place where I think God has a sense of humor. But Jesus comes there and he heals him on the Sabbath day. And you was, the religious people got all disoriented about that. And they, but he was laying there for 38 years, or not, maybe not there all the time, but for 38 years he'd been waiting on a miracle and here comes Jesus. And if anybody's watched The Chosen, uh, in The Chosen, they did a really good job, but, but Jesus walked up to him and said, I have a question for you, you know. And the, and the man said, I don't have many answers, the, the, the lame man. And, but Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk. And I think, I've had some trials, and I don't, I don't really like them, but I've never had a trial for 38 years. Um, and probably most of us in here would say they hadn't either. Um, but just think about that. But his day came. And I guess what I wanted to say there is, you know, we have trials. We have, um, we have those things. But to not lose hope, not lose faith that um, the Lord is, he does everything in his perfect timing. And uh, we don't understand it all. Um, Especially, I was praying for Dennis and Sharon there. We don't, we don't understand that, but we we can worship and, and the Lord our God with all of our heart and mind. And uh, you know, the the religious thing here is often, or I'm not sure if the religious is the right word. Uh, maybe self righteous would be a better word. Um, but the self righteous people, or you know, the disciples, they were walking with Christ, and they were saying, you know, when we get when this kingdom is all set up, who's going to be at the right hand and who's going to be this and who's going to be that? Is everybody familiar with that story, you know? And they were all concerned about this. And I think, I think uh, John and James's mother put them up to that. I'm not, I, I'd be stand to correct there, but she was wanting to know, well, what's it going to be like when, you know, there's those behind the scene things. But when Jesus died, it, it just struck me when he died, when he stretched out his hands, who was on the left and the right? 
you know, I would, I would just imagine that there would have been maybe other religious people that could have been crucified with Jesus, but, but it was two thieves. And I, I hear again, I, I stand to be corrected, but I think too often we forget those things. Who was on the right and the left? You know? And um, there's just so many. I have a lot of thoughts in those ways. And I think that um, some of the most beautiful things, and I wanted to go back to a song that you sang this morning, Show Us Your Ways. And I, that fit in my mind so perfectly. But whether we've been a Christian for a month or 50 years, I believe that the, you know, the, the scriptures tell us that let the simplicity in the gospel, you know, let that, it, it kind of gives a, a, a strange word there, but let that entice you or let that, let that, um, draw you. That's what that word means. You know, like if you entice um, entice uh, a child with a piece of candy, and we often use that word in a negative way, like the devil uses that word to get us away from the church. But it's al- also can be used in a positive direction. That we that the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ would draw people, would draw us to Him. And um, as we lift up, you know, in the wilderness there, they lifted up that snake. Everybody that was bitten had to look at that snake. And, uh, and, and the, they, it's, it tells us in the scriptures to, if we lift up the son of man that way, that all men would be drawn to him. And again, I just want to see the power in that bow and arrow, you know. We're not pushing each other around. We're trying to we're, we're helping each other see the power that's in God and the power that's in Christ. And because this short time of an hour here this morning um, or 45 minutes or whatever it is, it's not going to do justice for us in the, the next six and a half days when we're out there living our lives. Um, it's going to have to be something a lot more powerful than that. And too often when... You know, when um, we're, I, I'm just going to say it for myself, too often we're okay with just giving each other a little push, you know. And it, it feels good for just a few minutes, but it won't last. Um, that draw, you know, it talks about, I looked up a couple different versions of pulling down those strongholds that, that want to, uh, the, the pulling down of strongholds that wants to destroy our lives. And it bring every thought into captivity in our minds. And there again, that pulling down, is, it's a drawing. You know, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's so much more powerful. Um, we need to get on track here. Um, 1 John 4, if I have the scripture correctly here. I was actually wanting to read that in a different translation. It's, um, it'd be really nice to be just so organized that there'd be no downtimes, but hopefully as we, as there's those quiet moments in church, you know, that it doesn't get boring, that we, that the word is, is gripping us enough that we, that we have an interest, you know, I, 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 uh, I wanted to read us a note here, but, you know, if we don't have, like the world today, would we say that there is such a lack of, there's a lack of hunger 
and I don't want to be negative here, but there's a lack of hunger and there's a lack of, of appetite for the word of God. Um, and, and if we have that lack in our lives, I, I, I believe there's, a, there's a, a Jesus-shaped hole in our heart that is empty. And I believe that the world is so willing to fill it. And so if we have a lack of hunger and a lack of appetite for the word and a lack for, for spiritual things, um, we shouldn't be surprised if, if we have ugly things coming out of our lives at times, right? I mean, we, 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 reap, we, we reap what we sow. And... Um, We're going to start there at verse 17. Love has been perfecting among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, because fear involves torment. But, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who lo does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. If we could... If we could... Uh, just grasp... One little thing here today. Um, it says that God is love. God is love. And that love is not a wishy-washy God. It's a, it's a God with a high standard. And, and God sent his son, Jesus, And he gave himself for us that we could, that not just to, not just to make excuses for sin, but we would have power. That we would have power over sin. And, um, you know, fear is a real thing. And as we read this scripture here, who doesn't want to be free from sin? I may just reread that. Love has, has been perfecting among us. This is the uh, New King James Version. As he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. And um, for any, anyone under the sound of my voice here, you know, I, I see people at times under torment of fear, and it's not, it's not good. I've been there myself. And it's when we're under fear, we make, um, I think we make a lot of wrong decisions. Um, there's... When we, when we are motivated by fear, it's not a, um, it's often, we often do things that we regret later. Um, I don't believe that it, it makes you not a Christian, but I think the kindest way I could say it is it just, it makes us do things that we regret later. You know, that, like, I don't, nothing comes to mind to explain that more, but Fear is a, um, f fear, you know, it says it has torment, and uh, fear makes us miserable at its very best. Um,
so the question may come, um, I was really blessed a, a week or two ago, Robert was preaching and he said, you know, he's been preaching on love for 40 years and he can't exhaust it. So I was thinking, at that time I was thinking about preaching on love and I'm thinking, oh good, you know, can't exhaust love. Um, but, you know, and that's how it is. I say that to bring out a point that, that God is love. And even if we, what is, the, what is the smallest token of love that we could show to each other or to that person in the street? You know, I, I tell people all the time, it's not hard to share your story. Just share your story. That's all you need to do. As we walk this life, you know, we all have a story. Every last one of us has a story. And, and I believe that God is glorified, uh, as a song that we sang. He's glorified when we just share our story. And, and I, I remember times as a child of just remembering his grace and his love on my life long before I was a Christian. And I believe that if, you know, whatever we magnify in our mind is what we'll see. And too often, to just say it bluntly, the garbage gets magnified. And we need to put the magnifying glass on the good things. And if we, growing up, we, could, we can pick that all apart and I've heard testimonies of people when they share their testimony, and I cringe sometimes when, I, when they talk about all the bad things that happen in their life. And there are bad things, and I think it's okay to share them, so don't get me wrong. But whatever we magnify, what happens when we magnify something? Can somebody tell me? What happens when we magnify something, Chris? When we put the magnet, what do you say? We need it? it gets big. Think about that. And it, it's, it's not just big, but it gets exaggerated. I can take a magnifying glass and praise the Lord for magnifying glasses, right? As we get, uh, we need glasses and bifocals and all those things. But if you shine it on the wrong thing, you're going to be deceived. We need, to, we need to lift up those good things that happened in our lives. Those good things. And I remember back, um, I was just recently asked to share a little bit about my testimony and I was thinking about some things. And, you know, one of the things that I remember, without downplaying my past, you know, we didn't, we didn't pray out loud. We didn't pray without a prayer book. We didn't know how to pray. If we was in a bad accident, think about this. I mean, it's a very simple thought, but it's just very sad. If we didn't have the prayer book or whatever... We couldn't pray. I believe that God gives us words in those times when we're desperate, you know, and has drawn many men to himself through those times. But we don't have to have big, fancy, elegant words to pray. I believe a prayer starts with honesty from our hearts. And... Uh, God knows, you know, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, they, they came through the wilderness. God led them by a, a, a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night. And they, he led them through two, two uh, you know, he led them through the Red Sea and the Jordan River. And they get to the other side and, and they wanted a king. They wanted a man to lead them. And I just think how God, like, what, how does he think, how does he, you know, like, how do we hurt him sometimes when, we, when we're not willing to, to pray daily and not willing to read his word daily and we make choices to do other things and he wants to lead us. You know, when we pray, we talk to God and when, he, when we read his word, he talks to us and it's so direct. And there's people in the world today that say, well, I don't, I've never heard from God. I don't know how he talks to me. It's not complicated. Just read his word. And I've been there. 
we neglect his word. But the children of Israel, you know, look at all the problems they had with kings. And, you know, you set, you set, you know, there's a lot of political things I think about and all this thing. But when you set men in too high of places, it, they, 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 they don't do well. And, and you know, as, as churches, you know, we, we, we become ser- we're servants, you know. And when we forget that the leader is a servant and all that, we could have another whole hour conversation about that. But it doesn't go well. And look at, look at King David. Look how pure his heart was when he was a, a young shepherd boy and how he learned to serve and and he, he, he had some very ugly things in his, in his lineage. But what's beautiful about that is God still used him. It didn't put him out. You know, and he, he, did, he did, King David, uh, it's exciting to study his life. He, he did things and he understood God in ways that many, many kings didn't understand. But he, he ate showbread, you know. He, he, he did something there that he, he should have fell over dead. And he, and, he, and he didn't. His men were hungry. But somehow, God says he was a man after my own heart. And we need to learn what that is. We need to learn. We need to know what the story of David, how he was a man. He was always worried about the redemption of the people. You know, of all the mistakes he made, I think one of the things he was just, he was very concerned. Well, God, what are they going to think? And I don't mean that in a popularity way, but David was like, God, if we're going to, you know, if we're going to, um, and I, I believe this is a very valid question for us, if we're going to build a church or a kingdom on earth, they had a lot of kind of cloudy vision before Jesus, you know, they didn't know what it was going to be like. But, but he said, we're going to lose our testimony. If you just... You know, if you just do this, we're going to lose our testimony. When have we stopped and thought about the things that we're doing? What, have we been, how are we concerned that, hey, if we do this thing, like, we could lose, we're, we're going to hurt the testimony of Jesus Christ. You know, that's the high standard I'm talking about. I'm not talking about fear, but I'm talking about God gave us a mind to think and a, and a, a ability to to you know, a, a ability to discern right from wrong. And, and let's just learn to stop for 10 minutes and, and, and contemplate what, what, what is this going to do for the church? You know, not what it's going to do for me. And, and I could go on a, you know, a huge tangent on, on uh, just sin that has been involved in the, in the church of Jesus Christ where people... Uh, get selfish and they 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 don't remember what is this going to do how is this going to affect my brother back there you know how is this going to what what happens when when we get selfish and i found an interesting thing there on you know i've often thought about like not being selfish um is selfless, but it's actually, it's not selfless, but it's self-giving. If we don't have anything, we don't have, really have anything to give. But if we can be self-giving, I believe is a much more powerful word there. And when you think again about that neighbor, he says, love, love your neighbor as yourself. And he, he hangs like so much on that, like almost the entire scripture is hung on how do we love our neighbor as ourself. Um, we need to know, we need to know our self-worth, first of all. And I often think when people do bad things, I have, I can, I have compassion for that because they just don't understand what they're worth. Jesus came, he died So we could live, you know, and we're to, we're to live by that resurrection power. 
And, um, you know, how, how are we going to live by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ? First of all, there has to be a death. There's no resurrection if there's no death. And uh, that, that thought was just like, wow, you know, as the Lord speaks to us. And uh, <clears throat> I believe there's two, there's two th- thrones in our hearts. And the one is self and the other one is the cross, you know. And I believe it's very important that we have Jesus on the throne and self on the cross. And, uh, you know, it, Paul talks about crucifying ourselves daily, and I know there's a lot of different ideas about some of that, but, but to keep self in the right place and to keep Jesus in the right place in our heart is what gives us that resurrection power that we're to live by. And it says the joy of that is our strength. And to have that joy and to have that love, um, it's not hard to serve someone that we truly love, you know. Um, I think of a, a dating, a dating couple or, and I know my wife and I have had experiences where it's like, she wishes I would do some of the things I did back then. Does that ever happen to anybody else? Um, what do you think, Chris? Does your wife wish you would bring flowers more often? And I mean, how did you love? You're right here in front. You're easy to pick on, you know. But how, how did you love her when you were dating 30-plus um, years ago? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, that love, you know, it, in the... In Revelations, it talks about they lost their first love, you know. And when we love, uh, I guess my, my heart would be here that, that Chloe and these young people could understand what just those little tokens of love that they could do. And then it comes to us that have been Christians longer than that, those tokens of love that we can do that, that gives us life. Not just us, but... You know, it's more of a blessing to give than to receive. Like, it's a, it's a gift, but I believe it's one of those gifts that the more we practice it, the better we are at it. And, and there's a lot of things in life like that. The more we share our story, the better we get at it. You know, but start, just start doing something, you know, just a little bit. Um, and God is glorified. He loves that. But to, to love... Um, like, like we did, it's not hard. But when trials come, and I think of little Samantha last night as I was studying, she, she has this silent way of getting your attention. And she, she goes about 90 miles an hour with her little walker. And uh, she could walk, just doesn't know it yet. But she comes bumping into my chair, like, oh, you know. And I looked at her, and I'm like, you know, she just wanted my attention. And I thought, you know, at that age, she's just super easy to love. Like, I would do anything for her. And, but when, <laughs> she's looking at us. But when she gets older and starts talking and starts getting her own ideas and all that, then the challenge is a little bit more real, right? And so God's love is sufficient through all those times. His, his love is sufficient through all of those times. And uh, I've, not always, I've not always done well, but um, I'm not sure that I can see that clock correctly back there. But uh, maybe we'll look here. I think it's time for me to cease, but I would like to read a couple verses from... You know, and I think if you're a young believer today and you don't know what the love chapter is, don't be condemned, just learn. You know, I remember I was, this is kind of embarrassing to me, but I was 30 years old when I got born again. And I, I got together to a Bible study and somebody said, let's read the love chapter. And I didn't know what that was. If you're here today, 
or hear it from whatever and you don't know, it's okay. But maybe we could, let's, let's build awareness, you know, and let's have a call to action. Let's not go to bed that way. And I'll just read through this. I, I realize I didn't realize the time. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove a mountain, remove mountains, it says. Think about that. But have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And uh, I think Dan just went through this not too long ago, but again, I don't think we can exhaust it. Love suffers long and is kind. And, uh, you know, put, put ourselves uh, in those words, you know. Uh, we did a little test a while back at work, and, I, and, and out of... 25 guys, only one went home, and he actually did this, where he put his name, um, where, you know, love suffers long and is kind. You know, he put his own name in there. Um, love does not envy. Love does not prate itself. And I, I love that King James Version about prating itself. Is not puffed up, does not behave rudely. You know, and I, I think, as I was reading that, you know that we're the most rude to the people that we're around every day? We're, we're, we often, we, we pass the test when we meet the stranger. But to our own love of our, our lives, our own wives, it's the people that we're rude to. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how we, the awareness, it's the awareness is what that is. We, we become unaware of, of the high standard that is in Christ Jesus, and we 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 do these things uh, rudely. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinketh no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. I think how the law, the law is weak, and how strong the love is. With that, um, I maybe need a little more practice on landing the plane too. But um, we'll just close with a word of prayer, and then I'm not sure who uh, is. We'll turn it over to whoever wants to close. Or yes, did did that song get communicated to Steve? Okay. Okay, so I'll, I will just maybe uh, take my seat and have you play that song first. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs>